Hello, welcome to another video. Let's see what's inside this PC. It looks quite modern, but it's actually much older than you might think. And the clue is in the floppy drive here. And also on top, we have got a Windows XP sticker. So let's have a look inside this PC. It says it was hand assembled to the highest standards, the real computer shop in Sheffield. So that's um, a shop in Sheffield. Um, and Asus, as far as I can remember, used to sell systems that were basically pre pre made. You know, you'd get the case, you'd get the power supply, and I think you would get the motherboard, and then you could. Um, do what you wanted with it. Um, so straight away We're looking at a Pentium 4 type system based on this kind of heatsink um, attachment and Let's take a closer look inside Okay, so We have got a 20 pin power connector and also a 4 pin for the CPU um, cable ties holding stuff together um, This looks like quite a chunky power supply. Let me show you Up here you've got this extra bit where they've attached another part to it um, Doesn't really flex much, but I can't see any kind of labels. They're probably on the other side um, I've got a decent sized fan at the back which connects down here and looking for the oh there we go sort of right in the middle here Asus P4 S800-MX it's got an SIS sys chipset there it's got an AGP card here and a modem here And it's primarily an IDE system. I can't see any SATA connections, although maybe these were extra USB down here. A little speaker there, battery there. No memory, so we'll have to find some memory and put that in. Um, I'm having a quick look at the capacitors. I can't see anything obvious straight away. But that doesn't mean that they're going to be okay. But yeah, it's an... Asus motherboard, Asus case, not sure about the power supply. And let's check the power supply and see if that works. It looks like it's never had a graphics card fitted. Um, this is still in place and this cable's in the way and there is VJ built into the motherboard. Um, yeah, so I'm going to connect this up to a power supply tester before switching this machine on. Okay, so the power supply's got a switch on the back. I'm going to switch that on now. And don't seem to be getting anything. Let me just check my cables. Okay, so I've tried a different cable and we are not getting anything from this power supply. So I'll take it out, we can have a look and I'll use a different power supply. This is the back of the PC. You can see the modem here, and then I've got a fairly standard looking motherboard IO panel. Asus sticker there. So I've got four USB, network sound, video, printer, serial port, and mouse and keyboard. I was about to say it does look very clean inside um and maybe that's because i mean there is dust but generally it's relatively clean maybe that's because the power supply died and they thought okay let's uh not bother spending any more money fixing this and just got a new pc instead it's got a 2005 uh, sticker so that's 19 years old um let's just run this that's right.
quite annoying if I have to take the um, motherboard out in order to get the power supply out. I've got one of those connectors as well. This is the power supply in FSP 250 60ATV PF and doesn't look like there's anything too obvious but power supplies do die so let's put a different one in. This is the power supply that I'm going to put in. It's a HEC 300 watt. And there's another video about this. If you do a search for this, uh, the video is called. They don't make power supplies like they used to. This is a seriously heavy power supply. So let's see if we can get this in. Okay, so I've put in the power supply, connected up the power cables. Um, there's no hard drive in here at the moment. And I've connected the monitor and keyboard and mouse and everything else. So let's press, switch it on at the back. And then we've got a light at the bottom down here. Let's press the power button. Wait for the beep. Oh, I haven't put memory in. That's what I forgot to do. Right, I'll get some memory. Just gonna put a five, 12 gig stick in. And then switch it on again. getting a beep okay I've put the memory in again we're still not getting a beep um, I'll try taking out the modem and try taking the processor out and putting it back in see if that helps taking the modem out hasn't made any difference replacing the CMOS battery hasn't made any difference so I'm gonna take the processor out and um, have a look at that and then put it back in see if that makes any difference i'm guessing that if the power supply has blown up it's possible it's kind of damaged the um, board as well so let's see if we can release this or whether we end up pulling the Pulling the um, processor out as well. I'm not a fan of Pentium 4 heatsinks. <laughs> and the mechanisms are sort of covered in other videos. They're just, they're just, I just don't like them. 
They're just not good. Got the um, no black stuff. Got a tiny little processor in here. Let's see what it is. It is an Intel Celeron. Can you read that? 2.6 gigahertz, 400. So let's try putting that back in and seeing if this does anything to help. And I'll just put a dot of thermal paste on. Now, oh, it also helps if I press that arm down, doesn't it? So hopefully that's seated properly. Okay, I'm going to plug the power cable back in. I'm going to press the switch on the back. We've got the green light on the motherboard and then I'm going to press the power button. It's using about 61 watts. So it's doing something. Um, but nothing on screen, no beeps. Um, I'm going to try some different memory. Okay, I've put some different memory in. Let's switch it on again. And no beeps. We're not getting anything. The fans aren't changing speed. They just seems to be on constantly. Um, hmm. I've disconnected the IDE and floppy cables. The power usage is a little bit down. There's no disk in the drive. I'm going to try an AGP graphics card just in case. Um, let's see if that makes any difference. I don't think it will. I think we are probably dealing with a dead system of some kind or could be the capacitors. Um, using a Matrix G450 card. It doesn't seem to want to go in. It should go in. Here are the locking things in the way. Switch it on, press the power button. It's using more power, it's using 80 watts, whereas it was using 60. 
Let me try a different stick of memory. Put in some different memory, switching it on. Still doesn't appear to be working. Okay, I'm trying the other memory slot. Still nothing. Um, hmm. I think we may have a dead system here, which is unfortunate. But feel free to leave a comment and let me know if I've missed something obvious. There's probably a manual for this motherboard online somewhere. Um, Maybe it needs, I don't know, maybe a jumper settings uh, been set incorrect or it only accepts uh, smaller amounts of memory. I've used uh, 512, no, this is a 256 um, megabyte uh, DDR400 memory stick. Um, I've tried 512 gig memory sticks. And let's just try it one more time. But I guess if sort of some of these power capacitors have gone down here, um, they haven't, like there's no obvious signs of bulging, but they might have leaked out the bottom, um, which could cause the system to not post. So yeah. Um, a little bit a dead end on this one but it's a neat little case um, quite nice um, looking quite clean reasonable amount of uh, space for I think two optical drives two 3.5 inch drives here and then looks like maybe three space for three storage drives um, yeah, um, on to the next one I think, um, so come back for another video, leave a comment, let me know if you've ever used any of these Asus P4S800-MX boards or systems, um, yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye. These are the capacitors. Um, and I had a quick look online to see what options were on the motherboard. Um, there's a few jumpers, but nothing really very relevant. And um, the main jumper setting is to clear the um, CMOS. So I did that and it didn't really make much difference. Um, but yeah, bit of a shame. Um, and I guess for the time being, this can go in the pile of uh, fix later, if possible. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.